picked me up like with one arm and the other arm he's holding this girl back by her head like this and she reaches up and she hits him right in the jaw fam it's your girl pink coming back at you today with another story time today i'm gonna tell y'all about the time that i got jumped when i was in the ninth grade i got jumped by five girls but they didn't get the best of me they wish but first if you're new to my channel i would like to encourage you to go check out some of my other videos and if you like what you see then join our family and click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell that way you can get notifications as soon as i upload because i'll be uploading a lot so without further delay let's jump right on into this hang on first i gotta have it turned to my tea mm. Mm. okay all right <clears throat> excuse me all right so first i'm gonna set the stage for y'all or set the scene whatever you want to call it i'm gonna set it um i was in the ninth grade as i already said i was living in san diego california and i was going to this high school that was really big it was like three thousand students for ninth through twelfth grade and it was the last school last high school before you got to the mexican border of you know tijuana so we were like one mile from the border of mexico and most of the kids well pretty much all of the kids that went to my high school was mexican and or well there was like mostly mexicans and there was like filipinos and then Puerto Ricans and, you know, that like that. It was a, a variety. There was a lot of, lot of different ethnic. I don't know how you'd say that. It was a lot of ethnic diversity, maybe. I don't know. It was a lot of different people. There wasn't that many white people that went to the... Actually, I think I, that I know of, there was only like five white people and i didn't really hang out with with i hung out with like my best friend she was white and then i had another friend that i kind of grew up with well since the time i'd moved to california when i was 11 until then our dads <clears throat> our dads worked together y'all gotta excuse me if i'm talking funny Ooh. i don't know i guess it's my allergies or something my throat is starting to feel scratchy. But, yeah. the My best friend was white. And but she thought she was Mexican. Like, she only dated Mexican guys that most of them were in gangs. And she was a hoe. Yeah. She, um, a yeah, funny story. Well, not funny. Not really funny. Um... We were like 16 and, well, I was 15 and she was 16. And the very first time she had sex when she lost her virginity to some loser, she got pregnant the very first time. So, yeah, that wasn't exactly funny, but that was, it sucked. So, me and her hung out every day at school she actually like her nickname was super sexy sparkles yeah she was what they call uh in california they have like all these different names for people like you have like groovers which that's what she was which is like a hippie like people that are in the like all the hippie type stuff but them then you have the cholos which are the gang members 
Then you have the rebels, which are like people that like dress and act and listen to music from like the 50s. So they were like greasers, kind of. They look like they could be in the movie Grease. Just put it like that. Like I had so many friends that did that. Then you had like the break dancers and you had the stoners and the gothic and hmm. It was, it was a bunch of people. I hung out with everybody. But that ain't what this story's about. I'm getting way off topic. And y'all probably don't even understand half the crap I'm saying by now. So, we used... Oh, I lived behind my high school. Like, our high school was nestled in a community... Like, in a like neighborhood type area. But it was really busy. And... There was apartment complex all around the back of the school and on the side of the school. So, you have the high school here. Then you have a little area called the senior lawn. That's where the seniors would go and hang out. and had picnic tables and, you know, stuff. But, yeah. So, you have that. Then you have a baseball field. And then apartment complex. And I lived in those apartment complex. So... We used to ditch school, like ditch classes, not the whole day per se, but classes here and there, whatever. We would ditch class and we would go to our house, my house or any other friends that live in, you know, close to there. But we usually mainly went to my house. So there was like a bunch of us that ditched school that day and went to my house and my brother which went to a completely different high school was there for some reason oh excuse me oh, lord i ate spaghetti and sauce is like not agreeing with me so we ditched school this one particular day and went to our house now a bunch of people were there and these girls ended up showing up that I didn't really even know. They came with a friend of mine. And her name was Yadita, I think. I think that was her name, Yadita. No, it's kind of a weird name, but... Um, so, these girls came with her. And everything was cool. I didn't really talk to them that much. Like, I wasn't part of their group, and they weren't... You know, they didn't hang out with me and my friends. So, there was this one girl there, and I'll just call her Maria. We'll call her Maria. Maria uh, decided to go and pretty much, like, stripper dance on my brother. My brother was sitting in a recliner, and she goes over there, and she puts her big old butt in his face, which she was skinny. So, I don't, that don't make no sense either. She put her butt up, all up on him and stuff and was like, you know, dancing on him like she thought she was a stripper or something. And he was like, kept telling her like, get off of me. You know, like, I don't want you on me. Get off of me. Get away from me. And he like looked over at me and he's like, get this bitch off me. So, I went over there. I was like, you need to get off my brother right now. And she said... Who are you? Because she didn't know that it was my house. So, you know, I told her, I was like, this is my house. That's my brother. You need to get off of him right now or you need to leave. And she started, like, running her mouth. And I'm like, you just need to get out of my house now. My parents are be home soon. Like, i just make it up excuses. You need to get out of my house right now. So, she left. And it was, like, a few weeks gone by and fast forward a few weeks and it was like three weeks and my best friend like in california they had saturday school for detention like instead of having detention during school they had saturday school so you would have to go up there my dang look at that what all right You'd have to go up to the school, to the cafeteria, and sit from 8 to 12 o'clock on Saturdays if you got Saturday school. 
my best friend like called me that night that morning or I don't know when she called me I don't really remember that part but I remember her calling me and telling me to meet her after Saturday school on the senior lawn so me and my brother walk over there like 11 45 and we're sitting on the picnic benches waiting on my friend to come out of Saturday school well you know we're just kicking it talking whatever not really you know thinking or paying attention to anything because it's just a regular normal Saturday that you know we just did what we always did well we was talking and like the Saturday school let out and I sat there for a few minutes and I didn't see my friend come out yet but I saw that one girl Maria with like 15 girls walk they start walking towards me and she's like pointing her finger at me and i'm like i looked at my brother i was like oh no something's about to go down he was like what the hell does i want and i'm like so they walk up to me and maria gets up on my face she walks like right up to me and she's like i heard you've been talking shit about me and i was like no i heard you've been talking shit about me but i ain't said nothing about you other than the day that I kicked you out of my house. And I did call her a hoe, which she was being a hoe. So, but that's the only time I ever said anything about her. Like, she wasn't nobody to me to even give to, you know, I could care less about this chick. So, she's like talking crap. And we're going back and forth. I could tell she didn't want to fight me. Really, she just wanted to look big and bad in front of her fa her fa her friends. She wanted to look big and bad in front of her friends. And they started hit her, hit her, hit her. And she like, you know, start kept on talking. They were like, just hit her. So she hit me and I let her hit me. My I was always taught to let people hit you first. Don't go start nothing. And, you know, if they hit you first, then your ass is covered. You can get, you know, with that self-defense. Plus, when I get really mad and somebody hits me in my face, my adrenaline just, like, goes through the roof. Like, spikes and I see red. Somebody hits me in my face. And pretty much every time I've ever been hit in the face or in my head, I didn't feel it like it didn't hurt like you would think I got hit in the head with a beer bottle and like for a split second my ears rang but after that you know I, I was I was just mad well this girl hit me she hit me right here and she didn't hit me hard it it was like just enough to oh, gosh I can't talk it was just enough to leave a bruise on that bone right above my eye and she hits me and I like take her down like I grew up fighting with my brothers and my cousins and boys like I always fought with boys before this moment I'd only been in a fight with only one other girl and I'll make another video about that later but I never I mean I fought with boys. I wrestled with boys. I played football with boys. You know, I was a tomboy. So, ugh, I'm having issues with my dang shirt and my pink ass bra hanging out there. So, <laughs> when she hit me, I just, first thing, I, I, I just grabbed her by her hair and I pulled her straight down on, and we were on pavement, like black pavement. Pulled her on the ground and I just started hit. I like holding her by her head and I'm just hitting her and as hard as I can because I'm like really mad and there's everybody's around us yelling, yelling, yelling. And then I start like slamming her head into the pavement. And after like a minute or so, my brother comes there. He's like, Jessica, Jessica, come on. He's like, J that's enough. Come on, let's go home. So I just laid her up and I stood up and I turned around and we took off back walking across the baseball field back to our apartments. Well, her friends 
There was this one chick. I don't know her real name, but they called her Chola. Because she was, you know, a Chola. She was a gang, gang banger chick that looked like a freaking bulldog. But she, um, she wasn't having it. So, after we had, like, during our fight, my friend had come out of the Saturday school. And, because I remember, like, when we took off walking, she handed me a pair of scissors, like, metal, sharp scissors. And she was like, if they mess with you, shank them. And I was, you know, I was like, all right, yeah, cool. But whatever, 16 years old, trying to be all bad. So there, that one chick, Chola, come running at me. And she's like, if you fuck with my homegirl, you fucking with me. Well, okay. I don't know what happened to some scissors. Because I wasn't going to stab anybody, really. I, you know, talk big game, but it wasn't about that. I'm not going to stab somebody. So, I think I threw them, like, right before that girl got to me. And she, like, bulldogged me. Like, tackled me. And we go on there, fall on the ground. I remember her being on top of me. And she would, like, hit me and I'd block her. Like, when she'd go to hit me, I kept blocking her with my arm. And I'd, like, reach up and I'd hit her. And we went at it like that for a few minutes. Then, somehow or another, I ended up rolling out from under her and there was another girl that went to jump in she ended up falling on the ground somehow and i just like stomped on her head on her forehead and then after that like the other girls jumped in and my brother was trying to break it up like by now we have like everybody at saturday school is huddled around us in a great big circle there's like 50 of them and even teachers and stuff and they didn't even try to break it up which is ridiculous but they all these girls trying to fight me and stuff and i'm fighting for my life i mean i pretty much broke both my hands fighting them girls i could not move my hands forever like i mean like i had to have them all like you know bandages up and stuff and it was pretty horrible hold on there i go my alarm was going off on my phone but um so my brother uh he's trying to break us up and he picks me up like my brother's six foot eight he was like six four six five at that time he picked me up like with one arm and the other arm he's holding this girl back by her head like this and she reaches up and she hits him right in the jaw and he's like all right the hell with that he, he's like just can get her he dropped me and then we go right back at it and we're like just fighting and i'm fighting everybody i got girls pulling my hair both ways and oh it was it, it felt like we fought for like an hour but on um, real, I mean, it was probably like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. We fought, I mean, it, we fought for a good minute. It was for a while. And finally, like, the other girls was like, had had enough. And they were like, all right, all right, come on, let's just, you know, because out of all that, like, they pulled my hair and stuff. But I only got hit twice. I got hit here and I got hit in my nose. And maybe got some body shots. But as far as my head, I only got hit twice. And them girls, like, they had to come at me as a group. But they bit off a little more than they could chew. They didn't think that, see, one thing... You know, people say that white people are racist or, you know, that all this crap. But Mexican people are the, some of the most racist people that I've ever met in my life, especially to white girls. You know, they think I, I, I mean, to be honest with y'all, I have a daughter that's half Hispanic. I was married to a Mexican. I lived with Mexicans. I grew up with Mexicans. 
they can be really racist. And they think that a white girl ain't about shit, that white girls can't do anything, that white girls, you know, are stupid and just... And that might be true for some, but this white girl was not having that. And we finally stopped fighting. Me and my brother go and jump over the fence to go back home. And my best friend was with us. And we get home and my stepmom's like pissed because she was a bitch. I mean, we called her Lucifer. We uh, get home and my brother and my friend is like, oh, you, you know, you kicked their ass and blah, blah, you know, like talking up like woohoo. And when we walked inside, my stepmom looked at us and she's like, what the F happened to y'all? And I was like, these girls jumped me. And she's like, get the fuck out my house right now and don't come back till your dad gets home. She kicked me out the house for getting in a fight. And I didn't even start it. I think she was just mad because I didn't get my ass beat. But so I went to another friend's house and we just hung out at her house for the rest of the day. Put ice on my hands. Like I had just a little dribble of blood right here. Like, I mean, I, you wouldn't even been able to tell if I wouldn't have blown my nose. And then I had a bruise right here. So, turns out that my best friend, my best friend, set me up. She talked to them girls. And the reason why I know this is because eventually we, all of us, except for Chola, because she was just a bitch all the way around, but Maria and the other girls, like... We ended up becoming friends. Like, for real. We did. After that. And they told me, you know, what happened. They had Saturday school. Or they was going to have Saturday school with my best friend. And she told them that she could get them over there. Because the girl was talking about wanting to fight me. And... They was talking it up and stuff, and she told her that she could get me over there. And me and her, once I found that out, me and her wasn't friends no more. And then, like, she started, like, trying to steal my boyfriends and stuff. Even though we wasn't together, like, she, and, uh, she was a hoe, like I said. But, yeah, on Monday morning, on Monday morning... I go to school, and I'm in English class, first period. I'm a teacher's pet. My teacher loved me. The security guards come to the classroom, and they were like, we need Jessica so-and-so to come with us. And I was like, uh, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't thinking, like, they're here because I got in the fight. I was just like, okay, I don't know what's going on. And my teacher, she, she's like started crying. She was like, because they had put me in handcuffs. They put me in handcuffs to take me to the office. Like, really? I'm going to run away. Stupid. This, my, my teacher's like, what's going on? What happened? You know? And so they take me in the office. Our school is so big that we had to have five principals. It was like the principal's were alpha, like students were alphabeticalized. I think I said that right. So the principals were like alphabeticalized with the students and stuff. And I went in the office. My principal liked me. Like I'd bring him donuts and all kinds of stuff. Like uh, he was cool. And he calls me in the office. And both my parents are already there. My dad has, like, this shit-eating grin on his face. My stepmom's like, you know, she ain't having it. She's mad as crap. The principal said that because he had never had any problems out of me, he wasn't going to expel me. But I couldn't come back to school. At, like, after this year, I couldn't come back to that school. I had to go to a different school. The other girls... 
because they started it, they got expelled. So, we get ready to leave, and I walk out, and my dad's like, did you see them other girls? I'm like, no, because they brought me in through, like, another way, so I didn't see any of them. And he said, um, he's like, you, like, really messed them up. He's like, one girl got a black eye, one had, like, a big bruise on her forehead. That's where I had my combat boot, and I smashed her head. And then... Like, they was just, like, all beat up and stuff. And he was, like, you know, proud of me. <laughs> so, we get ready to leave. And my dad had a Harley Davidson. He's like a biker and stuff. So, he had his Harley. And then my stepmom was in her car. And she's like, come on, get in the car. And he's like, no, nah, Jessica's going to come with me. And we're going to go ride around. We're going to spend some time together. And my stepmom got so mad. She started cussing. And just raising hell. Oh, hell no. You know, she, I mean, this woman, like, literally grabbed me by my shirt and told me that, she's like, you're not the, you're not the woman in my, or, you're not the girl in your dad's life anymore. I'm the, something like that. You're not daddy's little girl anymore. I'm the woman in his life now. That's what she said. But, Yeah. That's why I'm still here. And you're gone. So, me and Dad go to Harley-Davidson shop. And we go eat at all this. Really, we go to the beach. And we go to the boardwalk. And we just rode around all day. And we had so much fun. And, yeah. That's all I got to say about that. So, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I'll see y'all later. Nothing, Maggie. Peace.